Good morning all. I've got uh, Millie's counting up on the OLED. Uh, the reason I chose Millie's is because it's constantly moving so you can see that it's all working. In fact let's restart the program by pressing reset and that's the Millie's count showing on the OLED. So the next stage in this project is to put the little humidity and temperature sensor back in the circuit and try and get some readings from there and put those on the OLED because I have a project it's to do with my shed which is far from perfect um, it's getting damp inside basically and I want to vent it so I want to measure the humidity in the shed and measure the humidity outside the shed compare them and decide whether or not to switch on a vent fan so that's the project so that's where I want to go next but let me just show you the code for this and where I got stuck in it so here is the code for that and you can see I'm now using U8X8 because it uses a lot less memory because it doesn't maintain uh, a buffer for the display it generates um, pixels for the display on the fly and in fact if I raise this up you'll see that uh, it's only using 6288 bytes which is 20% of the program storage space uh, which is 32k minus the bootloader size, which is one and a half k. So it's 30 and a half k. In terms of global variables, we're only using 20% of. I don't know why it calls it dynamic memory. Uh, it's kind of static memory, really. Is it's RAM basically? Uh, that's 2k of RAM, and we are only using 20%. So that's pretty good. Now, if you look at this code, and I've done it big so that you can uh, see it reasonably easily. Uh, after the including of the library, you've got the constructor call. And at the end of that line, you've got an object, which I've now named Oleg, because it's Oleg the OLED. I wanted a silly name because the trouble is, this was originally u8x8 and you can see it in my commented out statements that I've still got u8x8 there but that got me very confused initially I left that off and that I spent about two hours trying to work out why that didn't work I just simply didn't have an object name in there and there are u8x8s everywhere here's one with a capital u and a lowercase x the constructor call has uppercase u and uppercase x and then the object had lowercase u and lowercase x so I got rid of it, I called it Oleg, and the reason for that is because it's just a name. And the U8X8 thing was all over the place and was just confusing me, so I've called it just Oleg. Oleg the OLED. So now the object is Oleg, and then uh, here's a method, or is it a function? Yeah, it's a function I think probably. Oleg begin, Oleg set font, Oleg set cursor, and Oleg print millis with a delay. I mean, it really couldn't be easier, could it? So having got that working, I'm confident now to move on and put this uh, little humidity and temperature sensor back on the board. But unfortunately, my wiring is a bit of a mess. In fact, I don't need that resistor. You see, the thing is, I took out the blue LED, this blue LED, because it turns out that the Nano has a D13 LED on it. So if you do blink, the LED on there blinks. I'm just going to change these wires a little bit so that I can fit that back on the breadboard. Yeah, I've just pulled these wires out and of course that stopped because these are the SCL and SDA uh, wires for I squared C. What I wanted to do actually was bend these sort of vertically, loop them vertically like that. And then I'm gonna get a couple more of these and replace this mess because it is a bit of a mess. So let's pull these out. Oh, that's power to the OLED got rid of. I suppose I ought to unplug this really. Yeah, let's do that. Right, that's my wires on that. I think they're correct. VCC to 5 volts, ground to ground. Yeah, that looks about right. Shove that in. Make sure it boots up. I'm never quite sure what that 7 flashes thing is. But yeah, that's working. Right, let's plug in the SI7021 humidity and temperature sensor which goes there incidentally this little sensor is 3.3 volts but on the board and it's the same with this BMP 280 you've got a 3.3 volt regulator and a little dual MOSFET which does the level shifting so it's all done for you 
So the next thing I want to do is find a library for the SI7021. So tools, manage libraries, and in its own time, I get the library manager up. Um, so I think probably the quickest way I can do this is simply to type in there SI7021 and after a substantial pause, <laughs> because my PC is a bit slow, um, we've got an Adafruit uh, which looks like it's only for the SI7021. We've got a Spark Fun which may also be only for that, but there's also this one, the I squared C sensor library and it lists quite a lot of sensors. It's by Ingmar Split, who I've not heard of, but um, it looks promising. So I think I'm going to install that one just for the fun of it. Let's install that. That should put the library in my, oh, it's installed. That was quick. In my libraries folder. And I should now be able to, if I close that, uh, go to examples and as well as the built-in examples I should have right down to bottom yeah there it is I squared C sensor library and there are lots of things in there and there's the SI7021 and that opens another window and I can just cut and paste bits of stuff in here and paste it into my file and see if I can get it to work. So where I'm going to start, I don't think I'm going to need wire and I squared C because I've got a feeling they're uh, included as a default. But what I am going to do obviously is include I squared C SI7021 dot H. So I'll copy that, paste it um, in my includes. Let's put a line in there. Um, the text is quite big, so I can't fit much of it on the display. But let's have a quick look at what I need. I'm going to need the constructor call. This one's really simple. It's SI7021, and they've called the object SI7021. Well, I think I can probably cope with that. Let's do that one as well. Let's just take that line, uh, copy it and paste it here, and put a line in. And then the remaining stuff I need... I don't need serial begin because I'm not doing serial. Now this has got if SI7021 initialized, but I think I can probably just pull out SO, SI7021 initialize and not worry too much about if it fails. I mean, the, the if else thing is simply to say, well, let's widen this out. Um, you either do have a sensor or you don't. Well, I do. So I'm just not going to worry about the um, the case where it's not there and having it say I couldn't find the sensor because I'd have problems putting that on my display. So let's uh, copy that. Now initialize is going to be in setup. So we'll copy the initialize, copy that. Now that's in setup, so I'll put it in my setup. So that's that bit. Uh, what else do I need? The next bit is the stuff in loop. Now, they've put the static float in loop, whereas my static char, which I used for D to string F, um, which was the first way that I tried to get something on the OLED, and then I changed it to uh, doing a print. I've got that outside of the, uh, the loop, so I think I'll copy that. So I'll have these static floats Humi and temp for humidity and temperature. Let's copy those, but let's put them outside of my setup. Paste them in there. Uh, yes, that should do it. Now, what's the final thing? Oh, okay, just print temp and print humidity. Now, I'm not going to do a serial print. I'm just going to do a print. In fact, I'm going to do an OLEG print. So down at the, well, actually, instead of um, printing millis, I can comment that out. In fact, all I'm going to do is um, oleg.print, and it will be open bracket, Humi, I think, close bracket, semicolon. Is that it? Is it that simple? 
Let's just make sure I've not mucked anything up. No, that looks like it. I think I'm going to compile that and see what happens. Let's close. Well, no, let's just minimize that. Let's compile this, which should also save it. And that might take a while, but we'll see whether I get any errors. Yeah, one error, but I think it's just a syntax error. It's missing a semicolon, and I can see where it's missing. It's missing there. Let's pop that in, do another compile and upload, and see if that works. Right, I just thought I'd catch it uploading, and now it's verifying. Is that going to work? Because I didn't get any actual syntactical errors. Oh, 0, 0.00. That's interesting. So it's formatting a variable and placing it on the display. It's just there's nothing in it. So I've done something wrong. Uh, oh, yes, I missed the whole section, didn't I? <laughs> in the loop, um, they've got the static float variables, humidity and temperature. Then there's this set of instructions here. Uh, get humidity, get temperature and trigger a new measurement. Uh, I'm surprised that isn't before the get. But anyway, that's how they've done it. So let me copy those three lines and put them in my sketch. Copy that. Now that's in loop, isn't it? So that's got to go in my loop. Hang on a sec. I'm just going to make the font a bit smaller so I can fit it all in. So where will I do that? I'll do that. Uh, oh, I've done it second there, second there, but first there. Oh, I've made a bit of a mess. Okay, well, I'll put it in here, paste it in. It's not very pretty, but I'll clean that up. There is a clean up command, isn't there? I can't remember what it is now. Anyway, let's do a, another compile. And uh, that's the result. And that, I'm assuming, is humidity with probably unnecessarily two decimal places. Let me just see if that, see if that changes when I blow on the sensor. Yeah, the humidity is going up when I blow on it. So that's fantastic. That's working. So it's reading the sensor over I squared C, writing to the OLED over I squared C. So now I can probably put the temperature on here as well. Should be looking at about 20 degrees, I'd imagine at the moment. Let's go back to Arduino. Now that should be as simple as another uh, set cursor command. Now I've got a feeling because I'm using this font, which is a two by three font, it's actually using three character cells in terms of height. So whereas this set cursor, X is the left hand side, so I want to stay on the left. Whereas this one was zero, I think the next one needs to be three because this is consuming zero, one and two. And then the temperature I want to put at three. So I'm going to copy uh, that, copy, paste it in here, set cursor zero comma three. And then I want to copy my print Humi, copy that, again, paste it in there and I'll print temp which is temperature compile and upload oh that's good yes that's very good we've got about 20 degrees or 21 degrees I'm just going to put this torch on it see if that heats it up oh not very much but the humidity is going down as I dry out the sensor and the temperature is going up. It's not a very bright flash like this, but yeah, that's working. So I'm very pleased with that because that gets me back to uh, where I was with this thing. If I stick my nine volt battery on it, which also did uh, humidity to two decimal places and temperature, but in different fonts. And this one uses the UHG2, which I think takes up practically all the memory Whereas by using U8X8, I'm not using anything like all the memory. In fact, let's have a look at that. Yeah, so if I bring up this bar, I don't know whether you can see it there. Oh, you might be able to because this is a monitor grab. Um, but it says Sketch uses just 8K, 8.8K, so that's 28% of program storage space. So actually that um, SI7021 library must be quite small because I think it was something similar to that, or it might have been 6K, 
before I brought that library in. But that's pretty good because um, that's using, uh, well, far less than half of the available flash memory in the uh, Arduino. And it's using about a quarter of the uh, 2K of RAM. So that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, so result. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there today, but I just wanted to say that I've got another project which is going to use an Arduino, and that is to measure all the voltages and currents on my um, lithium-ion battery pack. So that's going to be another thing where I need a display, and the sensor in that instance, I'm going to use the INA226, I think it is, which I think is in. So I need to do a post bag next to get that out of its envelope. Um, so yeah, I've got two Arduino projects coming up, so I'm quite glad I've done this getting back into Arduino thing. Um, but as far as today's concerned, humidity and temperature sensor, humidity and temperature on my display. Cheerio.